Gentlemen, our final addition to grade 12 trigonometry is now the double angle identity. You saw compound angles earlier, and you're going to be working with them shortly, and you'll go formative. And the double angle identities, let's hope that you've got, so like got your pen, paper, notepad. The double angles are here, so cos of 2 and sin of 2, they are here. And let's see where these formulas come from. Why are there three here? Why is there only one here? Forms. Here it is here. Three different forms of the same expression. So, if you remember back to the last video, the expansion of the compound angle said the sine of alpha plus beta gives us this expression, cos of alpha plus beta gives us that expression, sine of alpha minus and cos of alpha minus. And what happens if alpha replaced beta here? We would have alpha minus alpha, and alpha minus alpha is zero, so sine of zero stays zero, so there'd be no expansion if beta turned to alpha. And the same would be true here. If this beta was an alpha, you'd have alpha minus alpha, which is zero, and cos of zero is just one. So the only thing that can really work is this top line for both of these. If all the betas turn to alphas, what would that look like? With three different forms, does that mean? Well, let's take a step back. How do we derive this double angle formula? I'd like you to pause the video and try expand both of these yourself quickly. All right, let's expand sine of two alpha or 2a in this case. Let's rewrite it into another form. Let's call it sine of a plus a. Well, sine of a plus a is expansion of a compound angle. It would be sine a cos a added to cos a sine a. But really, these two expressions are identical to each other. So what we get is 2 times sine a cos a. And that's where the double angle comes from sine of 2a equals 2 times sine a cos a. Let's do the same thing for cos. It can be written as cos of a plus a. And the cos expansion is cos a cos a. We've got the different operator, sine a sine a. And I suppose what we see here then is we've got cos squared a minus sine squared a. But you would remember back from the grade 11 work that the squares can be written in other forms. So I'm going to call this form 1. But what happens if I rewrote the cos squared into another name? So if we go back to our grade 11 concepts, oops, that's a highlight, I'm not a pen. If we go back to our grade 11 concepts, sine squared is equal to 1 minus cos squared. So we could rewrite number 1 to look as follows. It would stay cos squared a, so that is still that. But instead of sine squared, I'm going to write 1 minus cos squared a, remembering the negative. So the negative there with this one makes negative 1. That negative with this negative makes a positive, and we get cos squared a. And so if we neaten this up, we've got 2 cos squared a minus 1. Let's call this form number 2. If I had have used the other expansion of cos squared was equal to 1 minus sine squared from grade 11, I would land up with the third form of this expression, which is 1 minus 2 sine squared a. And so that's why the cos double angle has three different forms. First form, second form, third form. And that's why on the formula sheet you'll say it means you're going to have to choose at some stage. And you have to choose wisely. And with only with a lot of practice will you choose the correct one each time. Because each time you choose it, you're often choosing to get rid of something else. So that's why we've got three forms of cos double angle. So here they are. Sine double angle, cos double angle. They're on the formula sheet, so you don't have to remember them too much. But what I would say to you is at least for the cos double angle one. So for this one. If you're given the choice, make the choice that gets rid of something. So if you wanted to get rid of a positive one, you would choose this line. If you wanted to get rid of a negative one, you would choose this line. If you wanted to get rid of a positive sine squared, you would choose this one. And that's really how you're going to choose between these three. So here's a worked example. It's called draw a sketch. If alpha is an acute angle and sine of alpha is 0 0.6, determine the value of sine 2 alpha without using a calculator. So a couple of things here. Without using the calculator, probably means you have to either make a drawing or use our special triangles. Well, we know it's going to be a drawing from this example. So pause the video 
and try this question for yourself. What is sine of 2 alpha? Okay, so let's take this. We've got sine of alpha equals 0 0.6. And 0 0.6 we can write as 6 over 10. So sine of alpha equals 6 over 10. Since it's an acute angle, we know it's going to be in the first quadrant. So I could draw my triangle in the first quadrant and put alpha, put this over there. Sine is opposite of a hypotenuse. And using Pythagoras, we can work out this extra side, which is 8. Now we've got a full triangle, we can work from that. If I take sine of 2 alpha, sine of 2 alpha is 2 times sine alpha cos alpha. I know what sine alpha is. Sine alpha is 6 over 10. And cos alpha, I can read off of my new triangle, which is 8 over 10. So what we get then is 2 times 6 over 10 times 8 over 10, which works out to 96 over 100, which is the same as 0.96. Our second example for double angles says, let's prove this expansion and discuss its validity. So the first part you're going to do is proving that sine alpha plus sine 2 alpha all over 1 plus cos alpha plus cos 2 alpha equals tan alpha. And then we're going to look at which values of alpha this identity is not valid. So, pause the video and try to prove left-hand side, right-hand side for this expression. When we're proving, we try to work with the side that we can do the most with. So out of these two, we've got the left-hand side, it's got quite a lot. So let's see. Sine alpha, we're going to keep with sine alpha. Let's expand the sine 2 alpha into its expansion name. 2 times sine alpha cos alpha over 1 plus cos of alpha. And now we need to make a choice. And the choice we have to make is, what does cos 2 alpha have to become? We have three choices. We've got cos squared alpha minus sine squared alpha. We've got 2 cos squared alpha minus 1. And we've got 1 minus 2 sine squared alpha. So which choice are we going to make? I told you to make the choice that gets rid of things. We have a 1. Our answer doesn't have a 1. So we want to get rid of a 1, which means we've got to get rid of a 1. This is the line we're going to choose. So the expansion we're going to use then, let's just change it to blue, our cos to alpha is going to be 2 cos squared alpha minus 1. And that's going to tidy up the denominator for us. So in the numerator, let's be a bit smart. Let's take out a common factor of sine alpha. If I take out a sine alpha, I'm left with 1 plus 2 cos alpha. In the denominator, the 1s have cancelled, and I'm left with cos alpha plus 2 cos squared alpha. Let's factorize out a cos alpha. It leaves me with 1 plus 2 cos alpha. The brackets are identical. They can cancel. So sine alpha over cos alpha, or sine over cos equals 10. So therefore, we've got our right-hand side. The second part to this question said, for which val values of alpha is this identity not valid? So make some notes yourself as to what have we noticed left-hand side, right-hand side, that would cause this thing to be not valid. Well, let's start with the obvious one, the tan. What do we know about tan alpha? When is it not valid? It would not be valid if alpha was equal to 90 degrees, as well as any multiple of that, which in our case, we spoke about using this expression. Oops, that's not really neat. Let's rewrite that. K in elements of Z. So every 90 degrees and every 180 degrees thereafter, this would not be valid on the right-hand side. On the left-hand side, we've got a fraction, and the only problems you really have with fractions is in the denominator. So on the left-hand side, when we tidied up that denominator, we saw we had cos of alpha, into 1 plus 2 cos alpha. And that would only give us a problem if it was equal to 0. So what we've got is two sets of solutions. Either cos alpha is going to be 0 would be a problem, or 1 plus 2 cos alpha equals 0 is going to be a problem. On the left-hand one, that would only happen if alpha was equal to 90 degrees, again, k times 180. As we saw for the tan. On the right hand one, if we neaten this up a bit, we would get cos of alpha is equal to negative a half, and that's only going to happen in two places, either at 120 degrees, 
or at 240 degrees. And both of those we would have to worry about multiples of k360. So there are three specific solutions to this. First solution is the 180. Second solution, the 120. Third solution, 240. So there are three times with their multiples that this expression would not be valid. For the rest of today and this weekend's work, you're going to be practicing work on compound and double angle expansions. So please go through these videos again if you need to. I will also upload them to my YouTube channel. And what you can do is use them as you're practicing in the GoFormative. Enjoy.